I was married 17 years ago in the beautiful Cathedral of St David's in Pembrokeshire. I'm a committed Christian, an active member of the Church in Wales, the daughter of a much-loved priest who worked his whole life in a deprived parish called Ely in Cardiff. And when I married my GP husband, I didn't have the slightest inkling that, to my astonishment and delight, I would become the wife of a clergyman. My husband will be ordained in the Church in Wales in just a few weeks' time. Since then, we've brought up two children into the world to respect the faith in which I am immersed. My marriage and my family are the most important things in my life, and if they are under threat, I will do all I can do to protect them. Like all parents, we want the very best for our children. We want them to enjoy every possible happiness and hope that one day they will meet their life partner and get married. When we were married, the words of the surface began like this. God calls men and women to the married state so that their love may be made holy in lifelong union, that they may bring up their children to grow in grace and learn to love him and that they may honour, help and comfort one another, both in prosperity and adversity. We believe that this sacred contract offers the best outcomes for our children and the best place for them to raise their families. And I believe that marriage is the best place for them to do this. And I want this for my children, whether they are gay or straight. In speaking for equal marriage, then, let me be clear. I believe Equal marriage is in the best interests of my family and of marriage in general. I believe equal marriage is in the best interests of my faith. And I believe that equal marriage is in the best interests of my family, my children and everyone else's children. My Lords, some have said that allowing same-sex couples to marry will threaten the institution of marriage and rock the foundations of our society. But I'd like to suggest that the opposite's the case. We risk mar making marriage into a stone idol rather than living, life-enhancing experience by denying it to same-sex couples. With a few exceptions, I've been deeply disappointed by the contrib contribution to the debate from the leaders of my faith. They seem to dwell on the concept of the institution of marriage. Now, institutions are often very dark, dull, dusky places, and none can survive without being revisited and refreshed, and maybe your Lordship's house is an example of that. I want to look back at the words of the preface of the Welsh Marriage Service, where it says, God calls men and women to the married state. Marriage is a vocation, a response to a divine call, rather than a set of dusty, ancient rules. For those who celebrate their Christian faith, marriage is far more than a legal contract. Mar marriage is a response to God's call to love, and I see no reason why that should be limited between women and men. I believe the preface of the Welsh Marriage Service teaches correctly. God calls men and women to the married state, and that call, if it's between two men or two women, is equally as sacred, is equally a marriage and deserves to be recognised in law. And I share with the Archbishop of Canterbury his experience of gay families when he says, and I quote, you see gay relationships that are stunning in the quality of the relationship. But the failure of his and my church to recognise the vocation of these stunning couples as marriage is deeply troubling to many faithful Anglicans here in the United Kingdom. The response of the church to this issue reminds us of a shameful time, only recently passed, when women with stunning vocations to the priesthood were told they could not have this vocation. I share with many in this House and in the House of Commons a growing sadness at the discrimination the Church continues to practice because of the exemptions it has secured from law. It is becoming increasing disturbing, increasingly disturbing to, for me to think that my faith cannot survive in our society without the need of special protection and has become the last bastion of social conservatism. I am pleased to see that there is a correction to the original bill which recognises the Church in Wales as a disestablished church. 
There is now a provision which allows the governing body of the Church in Wales to introduce same-sex marriage if it should wish. I do hope that the more progressive forces within the Church in Wales will win this argument and that Wales will lead the way for the Anglican Church in England. My Lords, my gay friends are not beating down my door demanding we recognise their stunning relationships as marriage. It's people like me, mothers, sisters, friends, who look at their relationships and recognise the vocation of marriage when we see it and are demanding that we should recognise and celebrate their calling and not try and hide it in some dark corner by calling it something else. My Lords, this bill has passed all its stages elsewhere. It is will the will of the people that same-sex couples should have their marriage relationships recognised in law. Surveys have shown that 80% of adults of my generation or younger now support same-sex legislation, including three in five people like me who have faith. I'm deeply saddened by the thought that if my children grow up to love someone of the same gender, that they cannot have their love affirmed and celebrated by the church to which they belong. 